already applicable in real life situations. So moving on, we'll talk about our famous statistician here, he's called William Playback. And he was born in 22nd of September, 1759, and he died on 11th of February, 1823. Wow, look at a handsome guy. Yeah. And before being a father of tropical statistics, he was a Scottish engineer and a political economist. And in the 1786, he created a line chart and a bar chart to represent economic data. And in the 1801, um, he created pie chart and circle graph to show part correlations. He has a big interest in um, mostly economics, uh, politics, and also statistics. And he's, he has an elder brother um, who had also inspired him. He's called John Playfair, and he is a famous Scottish uh, mathematician um, working as a professor in the University of Edinburgh. And these are the few um, works that John Play, uh, no, um, William Playfair had um, came up with. Uh, there are three books, all contributed to statistical thinking when he was working in um, economics and also statistics field. And he lived, he had a, he lived in a, he had a way, a conventional way of living. He was a man of traits. Um, he works a lot in different different areas. He works as a writer, editor, as, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. And um, most mostly most importantly, working as an economist and a statistician, um, his work has been con his work is contributed in a lot of ways. Next, issues and challenges. Uh, moving on so. Thank you, G. Moving on, I shall share a little bit about the <laughs> the issues and challenges faced <laughs> by William Playfair. It is important to note that a lot of the issues and challenges that he faced eventually led towards the breakthroughs and contributions he had towards the civil thinking. So today I would like to share with you three issues that John, sorry, William faced. <laughs> the first thing is actually the lack of data. And so what happened was the lack of data eventually inspired him to create the uh, line chart as well as the bar graph. So here's uh, some examples. Um, during his time, Playfair couldn't really find a lot of data about the import and export that Scotland had with different countries. And so what he did was he spent several years of his time and he just did a lot of research, collected all the data and eventually mapped it on a line graph. Now a similar theme going on, what happened was uh, there was no information about what countries Scotland had trade with. So again, what did William do? He decided, I'm going to make my own graph. So, if you actually look up online, uh, if you just Google William Playback, you will see this image. It's quite popular. And at the year of 1781, in that small circle up there, in his book, he actually released this um, table, this um, R line graph. If you click over here, these are actually all the countries that Scotland has to trade with. For example, we have Ireland, Poland, Isle of Man, Anglia. These are the countries that Scotland uh, had trade with. And so, because of the lack of data, he decided that I'm going to be that change. And he plotted a lot of graphs, which led to the birth, the line, and the bar chart. Okay? Now, the second contribution, or the second issue, actually, that he faced was the flaw in others' design. So what William did, he looked at other people's um, graphical data, graphical representation, and it didn't really make sense. What he did was that he improved it. Here's an example. Um, so Joseph Christie actually released a chart of history. If you Google the chart of history, this is how it looks like. It basically maps out all the empires in the world on a world map based on location. So here's the Roman Empire, Persian, um, and etc. But the flaw with this design is that you cannot actually measure how big the empires are. So what he did was that he introduced scaled lines. 
in case you're not familiar, it's like one centimeter to 10 kilometers on the map. It usually appears here or here. So it's like a, a line. So he introduced that concept and he improved on this map. So this to us sounds really normal today because in geography right now, we do the scale lines. So thanks to William Take that. Next. So, okay. So yeah, basically this is what I said to quickly recap scale lines using geography today because of an issue that William faced with chart of history design. Next. And now, like what Jimmy has mentioned, William Baker is from Scotland. If you are aware, Scotland and England don't really go along. And so, basically in England said to William, your ideas are bonkers, you are crazy, and here's why. So it was during the 18th or 19th century, data at that time was represented with one variable. So for us now, we know there's like the x-axis variable and the y-axis variables, two variables interact with each other. So that's very normal for us. And that's what William believes in and he tried to introduce to England at that time. However, in England at that time, only one variable exists. So when William was like, hey, why don't you try out two variables? England's like, you're crazy. Because of this difference in like one variable and two variable kind of ideology. But for us now, it seems so normal right? to have two variables interact with each other, right? So imagine the amount of convincing that William had to do to make people believe this. So this is another famous graph by him. Um, it actually maps out the year from over there, 1700, 1700 about 1782 and year, and this is the amount of money that the Scottish economy will gain or lose. So it tells you that it's a variable of time influencing the variable of money. So this is one of the many innovations that he did during his time, two variables. But for us, it sounds so normal because this is what we are using today. And next. So that is all for the issues that William faced. Kelly will share with you a little bit about the contributions he did in his life. Okay, so before I move on to the contribution, do you all still remember what did William Pepper do? He introduced the student that Yes. Alright, so in statistics field, as you as we as Judy mentioned just now, he is the father of the graphical statistical graph. Statistical graph. Right? The father of statistical graph, yeah. Okay. The father of statistical graph. So he actually invented bar chart, line graph, pie chart, and circle graph. Okay. And like he invented all this like before the data put in, in the tables. So why why he came up with all this? Because it's easier to visualize and, re and it, it's easy to remember the data when he presents to like to the people. Okay, so that's one of his one of his very important contribution. This is the line graph with two variables. Yeah, that's not show you. Okay, so next in this, so this is the pie chart which also in later on it actually influenced like uh Forest Nightingale Forest Nightingale like inspired Forest Nightingale to come out with the polar rose Yeah rose diagram the rose diagram or we call it aerial polar diagram yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah so next he also could have contribution to like uh, topography and represented in map. So like the atlas with our world map, the scale line, he, he contributed to the world map like today in geography, we learn about like the scale line. It's very easy for us to understand. All thanks to our dear William. Okay, next. He also have like his con like when he invented line chart and all the statistical like pie chart, line chart, bar chart, this he also contributes to economy. So he's the first person that actually like tell the people that he argued that 
by using the statistical tool like all this, you can eventually like prevent uh, economy decline by using data. If you, you use all the data, you can uh, make the data as a prediction tool. So he told the people that um, uh, it is better that you find a way to like preserve in, in instead of like you make another way for like build a new business. So it's like you prevent before it's happened. Yeah. So that book. Yeah. So this book, uh, he wrote this book, and in this book, he talked about like how do you prevent like, economy decline and things. It's very a very famous book. Yes. Then, as we mentioned before. He is a man of many wonders. So he worked with like many, 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 many different works before, like different different kinds of jobs. So he also has like contribution in psychology. Like he has tools to like use in experimental psychology today. Like his chat, his charts were very effective device for communicating data. Uh, example like human perception and cognitive capacity. Even like our science today. We have the two variables, the x axis and y axis, also thanks to him. Okay, thanks. Then, again, as a man of many wonders, so invention has in many, many fields, even like in engineering before he worked as a statistician. Yeah, so he worked as an engineer, so he has like engineering background, and then he, he has like several patterns. One of it is a mass product mass produced silver platinum spoons. And then he also modified like, bowls of shape to make them faster. Yeah. So his contribution is a lot. And we spend a lot of time to like categorize it because too many. As a man of many wonders. Okay. So to summarize our presentation, we can look at this. Is faith we didn't think that's your brother? His contributions of linear arithmetic and also skilled line has um, really helped uh, in geography in terms of geography and also topography that was previously mentioned by um, Bio. Um, he actually improved um, the new the Presley's chart um, using these two contributions. And also yes, um, because. Uh, the statistical tool like pie chart, bar chart, line graphs, all of that are still used. Um, it's very relevant in today's uh, education. Like it's being taught in schools and it's being used in mathematics um, curriculums, and students are, have to learn it. And last but not least, two variables, which is being used in uh, y axis and x axis. And um, those small little things that William had contributed in statistical thinking is commonly used in science. And as well as real life applications, you um, might not really know about like how he had contributed. We came up with um, an example, an example, a budgeting app, Spendio. As you can see, this is. Uh, App, um, budgeting app, you can get it in the um, Apple Store for free. For free, yeah. And his ideas, as you can see, his ideas, line, um, line graph, line, line graph, yeah, it's being used, and also to um, help individuals to uh, to see, to compare the use of their finances and stuff, and how they actually budget their own money. So um, comparison between like um, what do you actually use your money for eating, gifts, and also fuels. It's kind of little things that um, William actually um, contributes in statistical thinking today. Yeah. So this marks our <laughs> end of our slides. William played back. He's a statistician, relevant, and very handsome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.